In this video, I'm going to show you the function keys actions in Reaper. Now the function keys usually sit above the QWERTY keys on your computer keyboard, right up here. And any key on your keyboard can be assigned to any action in Reaper. But also, many of them are already assigned by default. And we're going to go through the function keys in this video. So to see them, we'll go up here to the actions menu, show action lists, and type in on the find shortcut, the first key, F1. And as you can see, there's no shortcut found as F1 isn't assigned to an action. So it's a great place to assign one for your favorite one or custom action you create. But if we add in a modifier like Shift F1, that one is assigned to the mouse modifier keys and action shortcuts. So if we hit Shift F1, it's going to open up our browser where we can see all the mouse modifiers set up in our install of Reaper. And if we scroll down, we can see them all in addition to the actions we set up and the keyboard shortcuts. Now, this isn't the default keyboard shortcuts for Reaper. These are your personal settings, assuming you change some. If you didn't, obviously, they'll still be the default. But we can see it all right from here. If you want to check, any mouse modifiers or keyboard shortcuts you set up for your actions. And we could also use the modifier control on the PC, command on the Mac, F1. And that opens up help about Reaper. So if we choose that, it opens up the about Reaper dialog. We can see the credits, purchase, and other things for your install of Reaper. But we could also open this up from the help menu right down here about Reaper. The next keyboard shortcut we'll check out is F2. And we can see this is assigned to show media item with take properties. So if we select an item, hit F2, it opens up the media item properties for that item or take, which is where we could see all the attributes for that specific item. Do the same for this one, or this one. Now by default, if we double click our items, it also opens up the media item properties for that item. Or we could choose all the parameters that go with that item. So you might think we don't need F2. But if we double click a MIDI item, it opens up the MIDI editor. So for MIDI items, it's definitely helpful to use F2, as it'll also open up the media item properties for that item. Now, if we go down here to each one of these dialogs, there's a source properties button we could open, giving us more information about this item. And it's the same for audio, right down here, the source properties for this item, giving us more information about it. But if we want to open this directly, we could hit Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, F2, and that'll open it up directly. So we could select our item, Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, F2, and that opens up the source properties for that item, giving us that extra information for that item we want. And it'll work the same on MIDI items, right over here. But I should also mention, if we open up an effects dialog right here, here's our effects. Let's say we wanted to rename these effects. We could right click them and go down here to rename effects instance, but it's quicker to just use the F2 key. So just choose it, hit F2, and we can rename that effects instance. Do the same with this one. It's a bit quicker than right clicking it and going down here to rename the effects instance. So that's F2. Next, we have F3, which is going to send all notes off and all sounds off to all MIDI outputs and plugins. This is kind of like a MIDI panic button, where your MIDI devices or plugins receive a note on signal, but don't receive a note off signal. So they don't stop playing. They'll hold their notes out indefinitely. This keyboard shortcut will cut those notes off, like this.
and the notes are cut off. So F3 is a good keyboard shortcut to remember. Next we'll check out F4, which is set up by default to load the screen set track view number one. So it's used for Reaper's screen sets. And if you notice, it's similar for F5, but it's gonna load the screen set for track view number two. And F6 is gonna load the screen set for track view number three. And if we go down here, it's similar for F7, 8, and 9, although it's going to load the window set for 1, 2, and 3. So this will be easier to understand if we open up our screen sets. Go to the View menu and go down here to Screen Sets, or we could choose it Control e on the PC or Command d on the Mac. And that opens up the Screen Sets dialog. And there's Track Views and Windows screen sets we could choose from two different types. And you'll notice there's 10 slots available for each type, 10 for the track views and 10 for the window views. But by default, there's only three keyboard shortcuts set up to work with them. F4 through F6 and F7 through F9. And the window screen sets are available in every project, so they work globally. While the track views screen sets are only available in this project. They're saved on a project by project basis. So if we hit the save key for the first track views screen set, we could see all the parameters that are going to be saved within it. We could choose some of them, all of them, or just one. And it's similar with the Windows screen sets. If we hit save, these are the parameters that are available for the Windows screen sets. But instead of hitting save over here, we could hit Shift F7, Shift F8, and Shift F9. And for the track views, Shift F4, Shift F5, and Shift F6. So let's save a few so you can see how it works. Let's start off by naming this as a home, but instead of hitting save, we could just hit Shift F4. And we'll save it and name it home. Then we'll close this, make our tracks bigger this way, zoom in this way and put our cursor right here. Let's say we wanted to save this as another screen set. We could choose this one, hit save, or just hit Shift F5. We'll give this one a name and save it. Now we have two screen sets we could use, which can be recalled by double-clicking them or using these keyboard shortcuts, F4 and F5. So we'll close this window, hit F4, it goes back to our home setting. Or hit F5, it switches to that close up setting we saved. So you can quickly jump back and forth to different screen sets or how we set up our views. And let's do the same thing with the Windows screen sets. Instead of hitting Save over here, we'll hit Shift F7. We'll name this one Home. And for this one, we'll hit Shift F8. But let's first hide the track control panel by dragging this over here so we don't see the track control panel. And we'll save this one, Shift F8, and name it Hide Track Control Panel. And now we have two window screen sets saved. So we can double click it here to go back to our home or hide the track control panel. We'll use the keyboard shortcuts F7 or F8 to jump back and forth to different window views. And again, this one is going to work on all your projects globally, while this one is just going to work with this project. And screen sets can be used for so many different things, like track visibility or track heights or width. So check out my videos on screen sets specifically. So those are the screen sets in F4 through F6 and F7 through F9, along with the shift keys to save without opening this dialog. But again, there's 10 slots to choose from, so you could add other keyboard shortcuts in here by hitting this button, which is what I tend to do if I'm saving a bunch of them. The next keyboard shortcut is Control F4 on the PC, Command F4 on the Mac, which is gonna close the current project tab. So let's create a new project tab 
Let's make a few of them. And if we want to close them, just hit Control F4 on the PC or Command F4 on the Mac, and that'll close each tab. And then finally, Control F11 on the PC or Command F11 on the Mac is going to toggle full screen mode. So right now, I'm using full screen, but if I hit Control F11 on the PC or Command F11 on the Mac, it's going to turn off full screen where you can see the separate window right here. If you want to go back to full screen mode, hit it again, and it toggles back. So it toggles the full screen mode that easily. Off and on. So that's pretty much it. That's the function keys actions in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Oh!